he's a genius. The word fits. He's a genius uh, to me. Um, you never know where, you never knew what was going to come out of him. And so often it was, it was, uh, it was brilliant. It was funny. It was accessible. I mean, he, you know, Richard was, was really very universal. And any, any great comic is, is touching on all the universal things in all of us and finding the comedy in our lives. But Richard had another dimension. I, and, you know, some of the stuff that you've never seen him do that we did when we were rehearsing or when we were just fooling around and hanging out, he would just spritz out. Uh, he's like a Jonathan Winters who I worked with. You know, he was a, a, a comic mind that he, he would, you know, hit oil. He would just suddenly drill. You didn't even see the drill going, but out would spurt this comic creations that you went, what's this? You know, full-blown, full blown, hot-blooded characters. Uh, you didn't even know what they were, who they were, but you, they were funny. Um, he was a wonderful writer, wonderful writer. Um, as a person, no sweeter, bigger-hearted person to live. Troubled. Richard was troubled. He had a lot of anger, a lot of anger issues. By the time I met him, he, I think he was, you know, he had learned to, to rein himself in to a great degree, but he was always struggling with a, with a lot of, a lot of, you know, negative feelings. He was a troubled guy. You know, he talked about it a lot. It's not a secret. And he also was, uh, you know, he was involved with drugs, and cocaine, and, and booze. Uh, but uh, very hardworking, very professional. Even though. Sometimes he was in an altered state. Uh, but all in all, just wonderful, wonderful to work with. And fearless. Uh, you know, the show aborted after very few episodes because he called us together one day and he said, I want to throw it in. I, I bet you none of you disagree. He told, told the writers, he said, you know, what we want to do, and we're not, there's just too much censorship. We, 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 get, we can't work with a muzzle. We, we're not going to, I don't want to do it to you guys. And we honestly didn't. You know, it was like a job. And, it was great working with him, and we loved doing it. But we also, we, we didn't disagree. Let's throw it in. Now, would, do you think that was a, a like a, uh, a sort of noble decision, or, or? Yeah, I think that Richard felt, do I'm going to do, I'm going to do my work, and I'm going to do my work, and my work is fine, and who's ever censoring it, the censor is is uh, is not right. It, it, he understood that we were an uptight society, and. I mean, for instance, Lenny Bruce broke open all kinds of boundaries. Richard was not a crusader, but Richard was a, an artist, and he wanted to do what he wanted to do, and uh, and it's great. And he said, finally, if you're gonna if you're gonna be stultifying to me, I'm not gonna work, and I'm not gonna work on. No, I won't mention the network. Um, I'm not gonna do it, and I respected that. So I don't know if it was a noble decision. It was a, it was a self-loving, self-loving in the best sense decision. Um, not gonna compromise my work to the degree that I think I'm being compromised. The difference between compromising and being compromised. So, so that he wasn't willing. Was it uh, easy to write for him or, or difficult? Was it a challenge? For Richard? Yeah. Easiest thing in the world because he was right there with us and anything that we did that he wasn't with us for, he totally supportive. Uh, you know, he, he, great, I mean, he was a great writer. So he was totally supportive of what was working, what wasn't he could help. He would throw, I mean, he was a terrific writer. So he was a ball to work with Richard Pryor. Absolutely, could have been easier. I mean, it's not an easy, it's never easy. It's arduous, but it's also easy because f f exciting flow would happen. And he, and if it happened within you, he was right there with you. That's what I said about Tom Moore was a wonderful part of that way because if you flowed with Tom Moore, he flowed right, right with you. You know, like fast break down the court, ball back and forth, cat behind the back. And so, no, I would say it was great writing with Richard. Uh, it was an adventure because he was a very uh, volatile guy. And once in a while, that volatility came out. And once in a while, the anger came out. But as I say, he was all heart. And it was, it was his, his anger owned him in moments, but his heart owned him in life. And uh, he once, he once, I was once pushing for something in a room. And he said, I don't agree. And uh, I don't want to do it. And I said, well, but I still think it could work. And he said, no, no, no. And it was, it was, creative friction. And at a certain point, he yelled. He suddenly started yelling. He said, well, I don't want to do it, and, and, and that's it, so shut up. I said, well, if you put it that way, I guess the discussion's over. And we, we kept on working.
we all knew each other pretty well, and it was a loose atmosphere. The embarrassment faded out in 20 seconds, and we continued working, and it was count to 60. A minute later, he suddenly stopped. He said, Jeremy, I'm sorry. I love your dedication to it. I love that you, that you want this to work, and I love that you are, are willing to, to fight for it. That's what it, you, your caring means everything to me. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. And I said, no, no problem. I easily accept your apology. It gets heated. I understand, Richard. But I mean, that's, that's who the guy was. And occasionally he would get volatile, but um, he was a very sensitive and loving guy. Um, I know I'm going on and on about him, but man, I did love him.